There were two directors of PAHO, uh, Fred Soper and um, Abram Horwitz, who were very, who understood it, understood the contributions that, make, that INCAP was making, supported it very strongly. Also, uh, Kando was in uh, PAHO for a time before he went to WHO in Geneva as, uh, as the director of WHO. And he maintained his interest uh, in INCAP. And uh, af after 12 years, uh, we had gone from nothing to having uh, seven division chiefs with uh, PhDs and uh, um, other, um, some, some MDs and uh, a well-trained and highly uh, productive uh, staff. And when I was at, uh, went to Washington and was interviewed by uh, Soper, I was told by people that he was he was tough, he could be a, a bully, and uh, he could fire you arbitrarily, and so on. Well, uh, I didn't sense any of that talking to him. But uh, I realized later that the fact that uh, I could stand up or argue with him uh, helped, because he never did anything but uh, support uh, uh, in cap. Then uh, Abram Horwitz had been briefly, I think, assistant director. I, I had known him, and uh, then when he became director, he knew about uh, uh, in cap. Came down and visited and so on, and from then on was a, a very strong supporter. And after after he retired, he. Uh, headed the uh, com Committee of the Food and Nutrition Board on Nutrition and Infection that I had started uh, and uh, chaired. And then he became uh, the chairman of the uh, uh, ACC, the uh, Committee on Nutrition of the United Nations System, and uh, continued. I had long since left INCAP, of course, but he continued to be interested and supportive uh, of, uh, of INCAP right until the time, right until the time of his death. Um, so PAHO facilitated INCAP. There could not have been an INCAP if there hadn't been good leadership in PAHO uh, consistently over three decades. Well, I've tried to cover more than is possible uh, in this uh, interview, and I stress the role of the directors of uh, PAHO, uh, but there are two other influences that uh, I didn't uh, give due credit to. One is that the Kellogg Foundation agreed from the beginning to provide the, uh, uh, the basic books and supplies and equipment and so on, and also this grant to uh, uh, PAHO. But their main contribution was not only these initial fellowships, uh, that uh, the group that started INCAP, but uh, every time that somebody emerged as outstanding, they sent them off to an appropriate institution to get a PhD. And the first person that was sent off was Guillermo Rayave. And you can imagine that that hurt a lot because he was being very, very productive. But when he came back with this additional training, uh, he was uh, international uh, caliber. Uh, Ricardo Bersani uh, was, was a second. And he went to Purdue and got his PhD in agricultural and food chemistry, and is world famous. Uh, Miguel Guzman, who had started to do, handle the data, 
uh, was given a fellowship to North Carolina in biostatistics and got his PhD and so on. So that in the, even in the first uh, 10 years, NCAP began to build up a cadre of very well-trained uh, Central Americans thanks to the, uh, uh, the foresight and, and help of the Kellogg Foundation. And there was a man by the name of Benjamin Horning who was in charge of fellowships at the time, and he came every year uh, to see uh, and interview people that we, rec we recommended. So the, the Kellogg Foundation fellowships were tremendously important. This was the basis on which uh, I was able to get the money from the Ellison Medical Foundation, the $5 million I mentioned, because to apply this model to a few key institutions around the world to uh, significant, they raise their uh, level of uh, competence. Um, I, I can't overestimate the importance of training.